All right, y'all. We here with Sports and Entertainment with Dale and Randy. I'm your host, Randy. And it's Dale. Okay, and we're going to get right into it. Let's do this! Okay, we're back. Okay, Mr. Smith. But before we go into the sports section with you, All right. I got to say something. Okay, um, outside from working in, you know, in sports and entertainment, on my side, I'm doing entertainment news and everything, I am a volunteer. I volunteer at numerous places, giving back to the community. And one of the places I volunteer is called the Really, Really, Really Free Market. You can catch us on Facebook. You can Google us as well. Really, Really Free Market. Really, Really, Really Free Market. Located here in the Tri-State area of New York, New York. Okay? The next event we got coming up is on the last Sunday of October 2022. That's the last Sunday of October 2022. We accept all donations within the New York area. So if you got anything you don't need, you don't want, you'd like to donate, please just contact us on Facebook at uh, Really, Really, Really Free Market. You can also Google us at the Really, Really, Really Free Market, which will lead you back to Facebook. Okay? We also looking for volunteers within the New York area. If you happen to be visiting New York within that week of the last week of Sunday of 2000 and October uh, of 2022, hey, come along and come volunteer with us, okay? Email an, uh, a young lady by the name of Janet, okay? She can help you, okay? All right, Mr. Smith, now it's time to get down to sports as usual. Okay, Mr. Smith, why don't you talk to us what's going on in the world of sports? Because I like to know and our viewers would like to know what's happening. Talk to us. Okay, once I last. Once I last spoke, we were talking about basketball. Well, let's finish that, and then we're going to talk about my favorite thing to talk, and that's wrestling. All right, people. One thing before, like I said, I get into the wrestling. Unfortunately, the uh, first-round draft pick that Oklahoma City had, uh, Chad Holgram, will be out for the season with a, a, a lastric injury. La lastric injury. Not sure what that actually is, but... These things happen. I remember when Blake Griffin first got drafted to uh, to uh, the Clippers. He got hurt his first season also. And he was out for the year. So sometimes it happens. But when you look at Holgram, I heard that he hurt himself uh, guarding LeBron. I'm going like, how did that happen? So he must have either stretched and bounced too far. But, you know, he he needs to put on at least 20 pounds or 30 pounds. Because he's very... He reminds me of... Uh, a player way back when called Sean Bradley. He played for the Philadelphia 76ers. Uh, you can Google that all you want. He was very thin. He was like 7'6", and I don't even think he was 300 pounds. Maybe 250, 260. And somebody of that height and that weight is really thin. So uh, we wish him well. And, uh, hey, come back next season, hopefully stronger. Okay, two other things on the... Uh Football front I want to talk about. Uh, it's both, it's, uh, both are New York teams. Uh, one is the Jets that we did talk about earlier. Uh, they have a quarterback that's been with them for three years called uh, Dallas Webb. And he's making the most of his chance. I'm oh, sorry. With the New York Gi with the Giants. I'm sorry, not the Jets. I'm just looking at something else. Uh, he's been with them for, like I said, three years, and uh, being he's already 27, and he's been backing up uh, most quarterbacks, uh, he's given this one more shot. I mean, that's one thing I've said all along when it comes to, uh, especially the NFL, you need a good backup, because there's no guarantee, whoever, whatever quarterback there is out there, whoever it is, if it's, if it's Aaron Rodgers, if it's Mahomes, Brady, Russell Wilson, to name a few. Okay, you need that backup, a quality backup, because you never know. I mean, th think of it this way, and I'll go back to the history of backup quarterbacks. Tom Brady wouldn't be Tom Brady if it wasn't for the Jets. And people are going like, what do you mean by that? Well, go back, I don't know how far back, I'm trying to think of what's my, maybe it's probably early 90s, I guess. Yeah, it must have been early 90s. 
Uh, the Jets will play in the Patriots. Here's how this gets interesting. And uh, the defensive tackle on the Jets, uh, I think Marvin Lewis. Yeah, I think Marvin Lewis. Uh, at the time, the New England Patriots quarterback was Drew Bledsoe, who was their corner, basically their starting quarterback. And Tom Brady got drafted out of Michigan. I think it might have been his first or second season. So what happened was he took a real hard hit. Basically knocked him out. And then Tom Brady came in. And the rest is history. So it shows you about that. You know, a lot of, a lot of quarterbacks didn't become what they did is because of injuries. Because that's what happens. I mean, with San Francisco, it really wasn't that way. Because, you know, when Montana basically... You know, left to go to Kansas City. Steve Young is backing him up. Now, if he got injured, would he have been basically his backup right away? Sure, but that didn't really happen. Dallas, the same thing. They had a, a quarterback called Cliff Longley. It was way back when. When he got injured, that's where Danny White came in. And basically so long, Danny White did Troy Aikman and so on and so forth. So, yeah, backups are very important. Perfect example is, okay, the Giants, my team. When they won that their second or third Super Bowl, they had a backup quarterback, uh, Jeff Hostel out of West Virginia, who was also quarterback of my Raiders. I love the guy. So Phil Sims got hurt that year, so he ended up bringing them to the Super Bowl, and they won the Super Bowl. So remember, people, backups very important. So you know, hopefully this guy Davis Webb is a decent backup, just like with the Jets with Flacco. I mean, you figured, you know, they were going to get rid of him. And they said, you know what? We need somebody with experience just in case. Well, even though they didn't win many games last year, it showed that with Flacco there, it could be a little bit better. So we'll see about that. So we wish uh, Davis would block. Hopefully he'll stay. And one other thing which I was kind of surprised about. Now, again, people, as you know, and you've heard me many times, I'm not a Jets fan. But again, in the early 90s, in like, well, late 80s, early 90s, they had a team that was good enough to get to the Super Bowl. If the, if the Miami Falcons didn't screw up that field way back in 90-something, they probably would have made it. Yeah, well, if you're a Jet fan and you were born around that time and you remember that game, like some people probably do, that field was so messed up, they couldn't even move around. They ended up losing like, I think, 10 nothing. I think uh, Ken O'Brien was the quarterback back then, but they had a good team. But I think if that didn't happen, they might have actually won that game. But you know what? Again, it's the Jets, people. So Joe Klecko, who was one of the best defensive players probably ever, was just inducted into the Football Hall of Fame. This surprised me because I already thought he was in the Hall of Fame. So like I said, back in 92, they had a team. They had a defense. Every team, you know, every defense has a name, you know. Uh, Denver had Orange Crush. Uh, of course, Pittsburgh with the Steel Curtain. Uh, the Purple People Eaters was uh, Minnesota. Uh, the Bears, I can't remember it, but it was so good it didn't matter. Uh, Tampa Bay probably had something back then, and you know, a couple other teams that I just can't remember all of them. But back then, they were called the Sack Exchange. It was so popular that they actually uh, opened up this st stock exchange. Yeah, I know, coupon. What can I tell you? So he basically joined uh, Mark Gastineau, who was the league leader in sacks. Uh, Marty Lyons, who was a very good player also. So those three main players were basically the stock exchange way back when. So yeah, so that, I said, I said that's that's kind of cool. I said yeah, that's that's good. But I was very surprised. So it seemed the senior committee, just like the senior committee in baseball, actually got him in. So basically, all the years that he was available you know, to get in, they didn't take him. Crazy, but that's the way it is. So the Giants, my Giants, had a ring of honor. Uh, couple of weeks ago so during the uh, the game on the 22nd they're gonna honor a couple of players now if you're a giant fan you're gonna know who these people actually are 
uh, Ronnie Harrison, Lennon Marshall, Mercury Morris, Joe Morris, uh, Hampton and uh, Otis Anderson, and Lennon Marshall. And I'm going like, well, yeah, they should have been in there a long time ago. I mean, I think the great Giants, you put Harry Carson in there, you put Pepper Johnson in there. Uh, listen, it, it, it just, on the more, to me, it's my, for me personally, it's more on the defensive side than it is on the offensive side. Because again, the Giants were known for the defense. Just like Pittsburgh's known for the defense. And at one time, the Raiders were known for the defense when they were good back in the 70s and 80s. Okay, people, we are done with that particular thing. All right, folks, let's get to wrestling. Yeah, I know. You've been waiting. I know. It's, you could, the anticipation's killing you. I know it. Okay. Uh, let's talk WWE. Let's talk SmackDown. Okay, you had a match between... Kaiser, who's basically uh, the sidekick to uh, Gunther, against Shin Shin Shinsei Nakamura. A decent match, uh, back and forth, but not Nakamura basically dominated the match. Uh, Kaiser went for a, a move, and basically Nakamura moved and gave him the Shinsatsu, which is basically a knee to the chin for the win. Good. Five to seven match. Then you had number one contenders women's match to see who was going to go against Liv Morgan. Uh, you had Aaliyah, you had Rodriguez, Natalia, Shotzi, Sana Lee, uh, Sonya Deville, and Shayna Baszler. Now, I'm watching this thing and I'm going like, you know what? It's either going to be to me Rodriguez or it's going to be Baszler. Because Baszler at one time was basically Ronda Rousey. Again, they're friends. That's my dream match. Okay, if you're talking about a dream match, that's my WrestleMania for next year. Shayna Baszler against Ronda Rousey. Love to see that. I mean, this, it, they've been in the ring once, but it was a tag team, but it seemed they tried to keep them away from each other, like a build-up to it, so we'll see what happens with that. So basically, you had all those women in that match to see who was going to be the number one contender. Well, the first person to be eliminated was Aaliyah. Then the second person to be eliminated was Sonya Deville. The third person to be eliminated was Shotzi. And then the fourth person to be eliminated by uh, Rodriguez was Natalia. So basically you have Rodriguez, Xia Li, and, Sh and Shayna Baszler left. Uh, power bombs, uh, a lot of uh, submission holds by Baszler because that's what she's known for. Uh, Xia Li, a couple of power, you know, a couple of uh, Power moves, but at the end of the day, uh, Rodriguez pinned uh, Zia Lee. So it came down to Rodriguez and Shayna Baszler, which again, like I told you all along, that's what I figured was going to happen. Okay, this was really good. Uh, with Rodriguez, it was more the power moves, while Baszler was more the submission moves. So basically, Rodriguez was working on her arm. Enough that basically, if she puts in an arm lock on her, she might just tap. So she worked on that a couple of times. Then she worked on the leg. So this way she'd get like a, you know, a leg lock on or any submission. Move. So basically she power bombed her. She gave her, uh, Rodriguez gave Shane the base of the, you know, her big power bomb. She takes up a picture all the way up and slams it down for a two count. A lot of, a lot of two counts. So back and forth on that with the power moves and the submission stuff. And then Rodriguez, Went for another power bomb, but Shayna Baszler reversed it, got her into basically like a, a power move, like a submission move, kind of like a sleeper, 
and she stretched her arm enough that basically Rodriguez basically had to like tap. So the number one contender for the next match uh, that I'll be talking about soon, the next pay-per-view, will be uh, Liv Morgan versus Shayna Baszler for the uh, SmackDown title. I love to see Shayna Baszler win because to me it's time. I know, you know, with Liv Morgan, I get it, I understand it. You know, but We'll see what happens with that. But, uh, you know, as far as Ronda Rousey, she should get her shot before that, and probably she will. So we'll see what happens with that. Okay, so after that, at the end of the show, you had Roman Reigns and Usos in the ring. And uh, this is when, basically, uh, Drew McIntyre, who won... The uh, number one contenders match to go against Roman Reigns in the the castle thing that's coming up a uh, uh, week after this Saturday. Like I said, we're filming on the twenty sixth of August, so on September second or third, uh, it's gonna have, to have the pay per view, and you're gonna have uh, Drew McIntyre versus Roman Reigns for the title. So, so he came out confronting, you know, you know, acknowledge me, blah, 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 you know, God mode and all other stuff. So Drew McIntyre comes up and she says, yeah, Drew McIntyre comes down and says, blah, 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 tired of it. All of a sudden, out of nowhere, it goes dark. And I'm going like, you know, usually if you people watch, you know, Raw Smackdown, when it gets dark, somebody's coming. Okay, we already know somebody's going to be coming. So to my surprise, it was Killing Cross. He attacked Drew McIntyre, not hit him over the hit him in the back of the head, knocked him down, uh, clothesline, threw him against the stairs, and then you know, then he's looking at Roman. Roman Reigns is looking at him like, what the hell? What's going on here? Now again, if you know the history of Killing Killer Cross and Scarlet, who's just Beautiful. Let's just get that out of the way. You know, if if you watch the NXT, you know what they did. You know that they, they, they. You know when they come out to the ring, that music and the whole entrance is amazing. So I'm hoping that you know now that Triple H took over, and again he you know he you know brought up Killing and Cross throughout all of that stuff. They bring back all of that because when he tried. When he came up to W, you know, when he came up to Raw, they put him in his stupid medieval outfit, and it was just a complete waste of time. So then after that, Kelly, of course, went back to MLW, went to Impact, you know, didn't show up at AEW, which, you know, that would have been his next thing. I, if Triple H didn't come back, I mean, Triple H wasn't in charge, I don't think he would have come back. But again, now that Triple H is in charge, I say a lot of wrestlers probably will be coming back, but we'll talk to the, about that later. So yeah, so that's probably going to set up either a three-way match between Cross, McIntyre, or Reigns, or Reigns just goes against McIntyre, and whoever wins that, he gets a shot at. Oh, we'll see. We'll see about that. Do I think it's too early for that? Yes, but you know what? Why not? What, what the, what, anything to lose on that? No. So that's the way the show basically ended. But before, oh, but I oh, almost forgot. So again, if you watch the NXT, they did this thing with the. Uh, I can't think of the name of it. The the, uh, the sand. The sand thing, the time capsule, whatever, whatever it's called. I can't remember what it's called. But she came in the ring she turned it over. Like sands through the hourglass. Those are the days of our lives. So it's like tick-tock. You know, you're on, you're on a timer right now. So that's the way the show ended. All right. So let's get to AEW Dynamite. Okay. You had a match between Moxley and uh, Lance Warner. Now, I remember Lance Warner when he, when he was with 
a MLW. He was a sudden psychopath. Just imagine a crazy stone cold. The best way I could describe that. And he loved his bear. You know, it seems everybody that's from Texas or something like that loves their bear. Just think of James Storm. Uh, think of Stone Cold, Skylands Warner, Sandman. I don't know if he's from the South, but again, just along the uh, the drinking kind of things. So uh, it seems uh, Lance Warner had a severe injury. He was out all of last year. He came back to GCW, or as I call it, uh, garbage crap wrestling. I mean, it's not all crap, because I mean, I actually watched it a couple of weeks ago and it wasn't half bad, but it seems they put most of the emphasis on garbage matches. It's basically ECW 2.0, uh, as far as the extreme stuff, why AEW is basically ECW. I'll get into why that is in a minute. So yeah, uh, it was a decent match. Uh, Lance Warner tried to get into the, uh, you know, the extreme stuff, you know, grab a chair, this and that. It, you know, with ECW, there's no even grabbing chairs as far as, you know, disqualifications anymore. Now you could grab just about anything. It's, it's ridiculous. That, that's why I agree with Cornette when he says the wrestling now is, is garbage. And it, to an extent it is. Because it's, especially in AEW, there's no rules. I mean, you watch tag team matches, they stay in there for a minute. When you tag, you got five seconds to get out of there. Like when you watch Young Bucks matches, they're in there like, you know, they can have a cup of coffee and sit there and relax and referee go like, okay. I'm not, I'm not a fan of that at all. It was okay and all, but then Moxley basically hit him with a chair, hit him with a couple of uh, power moves. At the end, basically, he got to submission moves. And then he basically put him away with the Dragon Sleeper. Like I said, squat, I can't say it was a squash match, but at least five to seven minutes. Then he had Warlow versus Jay Lethal. For the uh, TNT title. And I'm going like, okay, this could be interesting. I don't think it's going to be like the other Warlow matches. The basic guy gets into the ring and he power bombs him 20 times. Jay Lethal's a good wrestler. So I know the match will go at least a couple of minutes. It did, you know, Lethal tried, you know, a couple of different moves. You know, went for the legs a couple of times just to slow him down. But at the end, the second, you know, Waldo could get a chance to get to him. He did. Powell bombed him a couple of times for the win. And then after that, he got attacked by... Uh, Davari and Singh, who's this big guy that's like seven three, and he basically ended up uh, beating up on. They end up beating up on uh, Warlow, and I think he power bombed uh, Warlow. So you know, sooner or later, that's gonna happen. Hey, why not? Six eight six nine against seven three. Sure, bring it on. At least you know it makes more sense. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind that. That actually wouldn't be a bad. Uh, match at all. So let's talk let's talk raw. Okay. Uh Dawkins part of the Street Profits against Seth Rollins. Now I'm going like I don't know about this. I mean the Street Profits are a very good tag team. To me, they should have won the title already. I think they're going to be the ones that dethrone the Usos. The truth be told. If not, then I really honestly have no idea who it's going to be. But I see them being the ones to basically dethrone them. So Dawkins was doing okay. You know, a lot of power moves, a lot of drop kicks, stuff off the top rope. Doing really good. I'm going like, okay, all right. Last match, last maybe around maybe eight, eight, eight ten minutes. Then Seth Rollins goes like, okay, I got to start doing something here. So basically, again, like I say, use the stairs, use the chair, do everything you need to do. Uh, he went for another stop. Uh, Dawkins went in for another move at the top rope. Uh, Seth Rollins basically met him like halfway, drop kicked him, knocked him down. 
uh, set up for the stomp, missed the stomp. Uh, Rollins, uh, Dawkins went for a, a spare, missed the spare. Rollins gave him a knee, uh, got him off dizzy a little bit, sent him up for the pedigree, and won with the pedigree. Like I said, good showing for Dawkins, and Seth Rollins is Seth Rollins. Let's get that out of the way. I mean, sooner or later, he'll get a shot at the title, whoever that's going to be. Will it be his old teammate of uh, the Shield, Roman Reigns? Will it be McIntyre? We'll see. Or maybe we'll take a shot at the uh, United States title and go after uh, Lashley. We'll see about that. Okay, so since Triple H has come back, if you remember, if you remember, you know, his NXT times, he was a huge Kevin Owens fan. Going back to basically when Kevin Owens first came to WWE as the champion and actually beat, and, and actually beat Cena. People might not remember that. First time, yeah, he took the uh, U.S. title away from him. And if you remember later on, when he, gets, when he screwed uh, Seth Rollins, when he was part of his uh, the new evolution. So you know he's been a big Kevin Owens fan. So I look at it this way in the... Not the distant future, maybe, who knows, a couple of months from now, he'll get that push and one of these titles I think he'll get. I think he'll be the one to be Lashley. I don't know if he's going to get the title, but I think he deserves something. I mean, Kevin Owens is good. I mean, think about all the people that have been injured throughout all of this. Riddle was injured for a while. Randy Owens out for a little while. I mean, McIntyre was, Lashley was. Even AJ was, I mean, at all of that, Seth, I mean, Kevin Owens was there. So you got to give him his due. So I say, for that, you should give him something. So you had the match between Kevin Owens and Chad Gable with all this on the outside. Now, I like this match because I like Chad Gable. Chad Gable reminds me of... Uh, Daniel Bryan, Bryan Danielson, whatever you want to call him. He's basically another version of him. I mean, high-wise, maybe he's a little bit shorter, but the guy's an Olympic wrestler, and you could see that. I mean, for that little guy, I mean, the guy could basically uses his legs a lot because that's what Olympic wrestlers do. And te technically, he he's up there with Danielson, Jack Sabre Jr. I mean... You name them, and those are the ones that I look at as far as technical wrestlers are concerned. So, I'm um, uh, low key to an extent. So, yeah, I mean, it's a good match. I mean, you know, a lot of suplexes, you know, a lot of arm drags, a lot of submission moves. Uh, Kevin Owens, you know, uh, uh, power bomb off the uh, top rope. He did a whole in Karana, which somebody at that size of 260 was like, what? Uh, super kicks, you know, a lot of stuff. And uh, it was, like I said, a good match. And basically, uh, set up the power bomb and then a super kick for the win. Then, of course, Otis tried to come in the ring and attack. Uh, Called Kevin Owens, but he got out of there in time. Which I was like, okay, good. So that was it as far as uh, Raw was concerned. Uh, NXT. Oh, no, sorry, you have more. More than Raw. Uh, You had a women's tag team tournament which just started. I got a feeling Naomi and uh, Sasha Banks will show up either at the final or maybe the next day. Because really, I mean, they had to relinquish it because they walked out. Which I think is ridiculous, but whatever reason they did, they did. So you had... Uh, uh, Brooke and Tamina versus 
the two people that showed up at WrestleMania, if you people can remember, Dakota Kai, Eros Shir Shirai, Eo Sky, Sky Blue, Blue Sky, whatever. It is what it is. A uh, decent match, but at the end of the day, Dakota Kai and, you know, every Sky, his name's going to drive me crazy, ended up winning, which is no surprise. And Bailey being like the manager, because I guess probably she's not physically able to wrestle just yet. And I'm a big Bailey fan anyway. So I'm happy to see her back. As far as wrestling, I give it a couple more months. So that was one of those matches. That was one of the matches. That was the first match of the tournament. Then you had a match that I was looking forward to. Tommaso Ciampa against Lashley. Now this is going to be a good match because again, Tommaso Ciampa moving up to Raw finally again because they were going to release him. But again, Triple H again is a huge Tommaso Ciampa fan. Tommaso Ciampa reminds me of Randy Owen. Randy Owen is not so much of a fan of Ciampa, so I'm hoping if Ciampa is still around, that Randy Owen and Ciampa have a match, which would be amazing. I look forward to that match. Sometime next year, probably maybe before WrestleMania, or if, that, if that's a WrestleMania match, no problem there. Love to see that. Uh, a lot of power moves. Uh, uh, Champa went for a couple of moves, suplexes, stuff off the top rope. Uh, Miz, of course, was on the outside because they're like a tag team right now. So we'll see about that. So of course, you know, Miz interfered a couple of times. So then Champa basically. Started attacking, uh, basically Lashley's arm this way. He couldn't put the hurt lock on, but then after a while, you know, he he, he threw him around, you know, g uh, gave him a, a, a spear. The, the match was over. He hit some hard spear, but he was by the rope. So the referee went one, two, and Miz grabbed the leg. So he had an air fall right there, and that was towards the end of the match. So of course Lashley's pissed off getting ready to go out there, so he goes out there, before he goes out there, uh, Chompa gives him like a super kick, gives him a knee, knocks him down, he goes for the pin, one, two, barely gets off, near four, good match, but then he makes a mistake, and the second he makes a mistake, the last, you know what's going to happen, gives him a spear, and then after that, picks him up, her lock, boom, match over, so, I'm happy they finally gave a push to Lashley because he should have. Because again, he's basically another version of Brock. Only thing is, the difference between him and Brock is at least he wrestles more. Brock's there for the paycheck. Lashley actually likes to wrestle and he's there. So I look at it this way. To me, the next big match for Lashley should be Kevin Owens and maybe they will give him the belt. If not, he'll put in a good showing, and sooner or later, I think he'll win, you know, Intercontinental, United States, one of these titles he'll win. I don't think he's going to win the championship. I don't think it's too soon for that. But we'll see what happens with that. So then you, so then you had... Uh, And so that was that for uh, Raw. NXT. You had Cora Jade against Zoe Stark. Now Zoe Stark just came back from a torn ACL. Cora Jade's the one that basically cost uh, Rosie Perez a shot at uh, Mandy Lee. Uh, good match, decent match. Uh, Cora J went after her knee, you know, which was no surprise to me. But Joey, Joey Star basically, you know, did a power move, slammed her, gave her a power bomb, 
uh, twisted her like a figure four move, and she won. So it's always so basically, she'll get the shot at uh, Mandy Rose later on. And an update on Vince McMahon, uh, another altercation came around, so it's, it's another $5 million. So, so far it's been, I think, $16 million, $20 million. So let's talk about AEW. Dynamite. Coffin match between Darby Allen and Brody King. This was a little bit ridiculous, but all it is what it is. Uh, Darby Allen, basically before the match, basically showed a picture of uh, him, basically, you know, with X's and stuff like that. Whatever. So, I mean, if you look at Darby Allen, I don't know, buck 50, one set, buck 175. Brody King was lost a lot of weight. At one time, I think Brody King was like over three. Now he's like a solid 260, 280. He can move around, so... The match is basically Brody King throwing him around all over the place. It got it was ridiculous. I'm going like end this thing, but no. So he came back, used the skateboard a couple of times, uh, the tables, you know, back and forth with the tables and the chairs, and uh, he was against the ring rope one time and he missed. So basically, Brody King hit it hard, a little bit dizzy. So you know. And then basically the faction come out to help Brody King like he needs any help. So that went back and forth and then Sting shows up for Darby Allen. And that got interesting, obviously. At the end, basically what happened was uh, Brody King was thrown out of the ring. And he was trying to get back into the ring. So uh, Darby Allen hit him a couple of times. And behind him was the coffin. So how they timed this perfectly, it was amazing, but I got a kick out of it anyway. So he basically drop kicks him a couple of times, gets him off balance. Brody King falls back, falls into the, uh, in the coffin, and basically, I guess because of the weight, the top of it actually fell too. So it actually closed by itself, which was priceless. So he won. Okay, no problem at all. Then Malachi Kai shows up. Then King uh, Sting shows up. He's got the baseball bat. He comes into the ring and says, "Look, enough of this." So he says, "Okay." He gives the ring. He gives the bat to Malachi Black, and I'm going, "What are you doing?" And he goes, like, "Go ahead. Go ahead. Hit me. Go ahead. Do something." Malachi got like goes like, "No, no, no. We're not. We're not doing it. We're doing it my way. We're not doing it this way." So sooner or later, I think they'll have that match. And again, Sting's going to be turning 63. So you better hurry up with that. So, you know, that, that's that. So, that. so that was that match. So you had a couple, of, you had a couple of matches too with the with the uh, the young bucks. So you had a six man tag team match, which is really good. You had the you had the Lucha Brothers against Andrade and Rush. Now this is all Lucha, so you know a lot of flying around, a lot of this, a lot of that. Uh, really, really good match. But at the end of the day, uh, a couple of power let's see, couple power bombs, a couple of Canadian destroyers. Uh, Lucha Brothers, to my surprise, even though they were one of my favorite tag teams anyway, came out the winner. Good match. And I was like, okay, cool. So that'll probably set it up for probably Lucha Brothers to go against the Young Bucks again. Or maybe FTR down the line. So we'll see We'll see about that. And the, ma the match ended with the uh, Lucha Brothers with a 
but a, a, a DDT for the uh, the win. All right, let's talk Impact Wrestling for the people that don't watch Impact. Well, if you want to check Impact, you can watch it every Thursday at eight o'clock on Access TV. If you have Access TV, if not, you can watch it on uh, on Fight TV. Okay, you had uh, Mims versus. Uh, You had uh, Exile Lin against uh, Madison Rain. Now, Exile Lin, you got to remember from NXT. Uh, Madison Rain, well, she's been in NXT a long, I mean, Impact a long time. Uh, it's a decent match, but at the end of the day, uh, Exile Lin won with the uh, rollover. It's like it seems that's everybody's favorite move these days. Then you had Rocky Romero. If you watch New Japan Wrestling, you know him, and from AEW, you know him also. Against Mike Bailey. Now, let me tell you about this kid, Mike Bailey. This guy, this kid's the next it. Reminds me of like a Sabre Jr. Uh, I don't know about a Seth Rollins, because he's more technical. But if, if, I would say if Brian Danielson was maybe a little bit taller it remind me of him uh he's really good uh match was good i mean a lot of a lot of submission moves a lot of arm bars a lot of uh, spinning toe holds and at the end mike bailey won with a 360 off the top rope this is a sick move he he jumps off the top rope he does a turn and he ba it's basically like a 360 and like Bell's move to stomp. So it's like a 360 stomp. It's vicious. But uh, for the win, so, you know, he, he remains the champion. Uh, he's the uh, X Division champion out there. Uh, then you had a match between uh, Rosemary and uh, Taya Valkyrie. Against uh, Peraza and uh, Chelsea Green for the, uh, the title. Uh, back and forth. Uh, some suplexes, some odd bars, because Diana Prazer is basically the woman's version of Daniel Bryan, Bryan Danielson. Uh, Chelsea Green, not much of anything, something to look at, but other than that, you know, wrestling wise, I mean, got decent, you know, moves, uh, DDTs, uh, super kicks. Seems everybody's got the super. Uh, Britt Baker, Chelsea Green, you know, the much for the super kicks. Uh, back and forth, back and forth, and uh, Diana Peraza and uh, Chelsea Green are, are your new uh, champions. So they had another match about a week later. It was them against uh, uh, Mia Yim and uh, Johnny Grace. Also for the uh, title before uh, Mia Yim went against Johnny Grace for the title, which will be the next pay per view, which I'll talk about in a minute. So basically, what happened was Peraza and uh, Chelsea Green basically double teamed uh, Grace. Mia Yim tried to get in there, they beat her up, and at the end of the day, they basically pinned her for the. Uh, for the win. So right now it looks they're a tag team. Peraz is basically, I guess, going to do the tag team for a little while until they basically put it back, you know, for singles because she was the champ for a while. So we'll, we'll see about that. So let's talk about the uh, the championship match uh, between Mia Yim and Jordan Grace. They've known each other for a while. 
It was actually a, a very good match. But at the end of the day, basically with Jordan Grace, it's just a little too much uh, power. So uh, yeah, that's, it, it was really a good match. He had her a couple of times, couple of power bombs, super kicks, toe holds. You know, I thought maybe she might just win this, but Jordan Grace, I mean, if you look at her, it's like a, a mini Scott's, uh, Rick Scott Steiner. Or Brom Breaker, if you want to talk about him, who's basically Steiner's son. Yeah, imagine him as a female. It would be her. So that was actually uh, good. So, yeah, so that was, like I say, a good match. And uh, I guess, uh, like I said, with Diane Peraza, I think she'll basically be set up for a championship match, uh, I say very soon. Because it's, I mean, again, you know, they're figuring like, you know, Mickey James, you know, basically lost the last, her last match. And uh, yeah, they're going like, you know what? Uh, time to get her back on there. Because again, you know, they have a nice division in Impact, but you have so many people that you can see on the singles more than the, uh, Tag team. I mean, Ty Valkyrie is a woman's champion wherever she went. So, I mean, it's a little bit different. So, after the match, Rosemary attacked Ty Valkyrie. She had enough. So, uh, Havoc slash Rebecca, whatever her name is, coming back. We'll see what happens with that. All right, let's get back to SmackDown. Okay, you had uh, uh, this. Another qualifying match between and with again with Zia Lee and Shotzi versus Alia and Rodriguez. Uh, decent match, but at the end of the day, Rodriguez won, so they advanced to the uh, the semifinals. So Drew McIntyre came out. To go front of Roman, but Roman's not there. And then Scarlet shows the uh, time capsule thing. And then the Uso show up, attack Drew, power bombed him, and then basically what happened was at the end of the day he basically, you know, claimed more both of them. So you had a championship match for the uh, uh, Intercontinental match belt between Gunther, Walter, call whatever you want, against Nakamura. I like this match. This was a really good match. Uh, Nakamura tried to shin stops a couple of times. He actually connected one time, which I was going like one, two, near fall. Uh, Gunther with those chops that just watch hurts. Uh, a couple of arm bars. Uh, tried to sleep her. But at the end of the day, uh, Gunther's still your championship. He ended the match. Uh, uh, a missile drop kick, which surprised me. And then a power bomb for the win. But it was actually a really good match. I actually uh, enjoyed that. It was a good match. Okay, let's get to uh, AEW's pay-per-view emergence. Okay, no, sorry, Impact's, Impact's pay-per-view emergence. Sorry about that. Okay, it was Mike Bailey versus Jack Evans. Like I said, this Mike Bailey guy, very good. I mean, he's really good. Uh, match went back and forth. Uh, Jack Evans does submissions like him, so he had a lot of like, uh, you know, arm bars, drop kicks, uh, suplexes off the top rope, uh, triple, double, triple suplexes. But at the end of the day, basically, Mike Evans won with the move I've been telling people about, which is vicious. A 360 and a stomp for the win, but it was a good match. Then you had a match between Eric Young and Dita against 
Chris Saban and Kushida. Now you people remember Kushida from uh, NXT. He left NXT and he went to uh, Impact. He's all over the place. He was in New Japan too. So he's been all over the place. Uh, good match. Definitely thought uh, Sabin and uh, Kushida were going to win. But at the end of the day, nope. Uh, Eric Young set up uh, Kushida for the pile driver and won with the pile driver. Decent match. Uh, then you had a lucha match, Bandito versus Oris. Now, if you follow AAA wrestling, or maybe MLW, you might have seen these two, or AEW, because in AEW you saw Bandito. This, this to me, this might have been, uh, it was a really good match. I mean, I'm not saying match of the year, but it wasn't that far off. It's a really good match. So at the end of the day, it went back and forth, back and forth. But the old-fashioned way, since people win in these days, uh, Horos went for a, 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 sl a slide over, and then he reversed it, Bandito, and Bandito rolled over for the win. Good match. I enjoyed it. Then you had Sammy Callahan. Okay, if you people don't watch Impact, this guy's crazy. This guy's basically the ECW version of Sandman, like Callahan. He, the more pain, the better. He doesn't mind it. So I'm with Sammy Callahan versus uh, Macklin. Uh, this was a this match was all over the place. It was an anywhere force match. So basically, they go everywhere. They went anywhere, outside, using everything. You know, the thumbtack nonsense, uh, doors, chairs. I don't. I I ran out of things they used. No pizza cutters. Thankfully, they stayed away from the pizza cutters. But uh, they wrestled to the outside. They were wrestling all over the place. Th this match was like all over the place. This I, I this match basically I never thought was even gonna happen. But it was just it was just crazy. So the match started and basically what happened was they couldn't get them in a the ring. So basically, you know, it looked like, okay, double DQ, but we'll get to that later. So why that happened, I said, you know what, we got to finish, it's a pay-per-view, we got to finish this. So then they had any, uh, Jesus, Eddie Edwards, PCO, Max Taven, Vincent and Mike Bennett versus the Bullet Club, but this version of it, uh, Ace Austin. Chris Bay, Carl Anderson, and uh, Luke Gallows. And if uh, if they lose, if they lost this match, then basically, uh, on and no more, which is what, is what basically uh, Edwards, PCO, Tabin, Vincent, and Benny called themselves, then they got to disband. Meaning no title shot, no nothing. Uh, I mean, again, there's so many wrestlers, so many different moves. Magic Killer, they tried. Uh, they uh, they came in last second, stopped that. At the end of the day, basically, uh, Eddie, uh, Eddie Edwards and Simon no more ended up winning. Good match, went back and forth. I liked it. It was a very good match, but they don't disband them. And uh, the next pay per view, uh, you will have uh, Matt Taven and Mike Bennett against uh, Carl Anderson and Lou Gallows for the uh, TNA Championship. Then you had uh, the match that I was talking about with Jordan Grace and Mia Yim.
Good match. Went back and forth, tried a couple of different power moves. Uh, Mia Yim tried, you know, work on the arms so this way, you know, you know, she would stop the power moves, but the, too much stuff. At the end of the day, basically, uh, Gracie gave her version, her version of the uh, spare, the, uh, basically the, uh, the Grace driver to win. Good match, very good match, but she she wins. She retains the title. Now, one to me, probably one of the matches of the year so far. Josh Alexander versus Alex Shelley. Now, Alex Shelley is known as a tag team partner. Him and Chris Saban, Motor City, Motor City Machine Guns. Been tag team partners for a long time. Motor City Machine Guns and Kushida, they're called the Time Machine. Because Shelley and Kushida were one time with tag team partners back in Japan. Okay, now this match went back and forth for uh, maybe almost a half an hour. Alex Shelley tried to basically work on his uh, uh, Alexander's arms and legs because that's where he gets his strength from. He's a technical wrestler. So basically a lot of arm bars, a lot of uh, figure fours, uh, a lot of different moves. Stuff off the top rope. Then Alexander basically tried, you know, you know, a lot of ankle locks. So it went back and forth, back and forth. But like I said, a lot of different ones. I mean, power bombs, figure fours, reverse figure fours, back to the power bombs. It was like back and forth, back and forth. I was like, <coughs> is this thing going to end? And I'm going like, you know what? Keep it going. It's, it's fine with me. I don't even have an issue with this because it's just, it's just that good. But after like 25 minutes, basically, he worked in the arm long enough. And he basically had him in a couple of different arm bars, you know, submission mo mo modes, you know, like the Dragon Sleeper. Alex Shaw had you know, Shaw Alexander in those moves, but then he reversed it a couple of times. Then he picked them up, he power bombed them a couple of times. And the end result is basically okay. Josh Alexander reversed a couple of moves. And basically, he, st he stretched them out. And at the end, basically, he basically won. But Alex Shelley, I mean, listen, he deserved that number one shot. So that was actually a good match. Match of the year, yeah, or well, one in them anyway. So that was actually good. <coughs> Jeez. Okay, now let's get to uh, let's get to uh, this episode of uh, last last week's episode of Raw. Uh, another. Uh, Opening round match. Uh, Alexa Bliss and Asuka versus Nikki Ass and Dudra. Decent match. Went back and forth. But at the end of the day, like you figured, uh, Asuka surprisingly uh, put the Asuka lock on Dewdrop. And Dewdrop actually tapped. You would have thought it would have been uh, Nikki Ash, but no. Then you had a surprise match. Drew McIntyre comes out talking about all the stuff he's been through and all this other stuff. So Kevin Owen, go, Kevin Owen goes like, wait a minute. Uh, I've been out there all along doing all this stuff too. So then you had a match between Kevin Owens and Drew McIntyre. And I'm going like, oh wow, this could get really interesting. A uh, really good match. But at the end of the day, uh, well, you had a double DQ. Because a lot of people came, the Usos came in and interfered, so, you know. But, yeah. Uh, I wish this match would have gone further. I think this is going to be a match in one, one of the pay-per-views. But I'm looking forward to when they do actually have it. Then you had a match which I was surprised to hear that they never wrestled each other in WWE. But I know they, they, I know they wrestled each other in Impact. Bobby Lashley versus AJ Styles. This was a good match. This was a very good match. Now again, you know, AJ Styles being a smaller guy, got to work on, you know, the arm. Because if you don't work on you know, Lashley's arm, her lock could be put on at any time. Uh, again, more power moves. Uh, AJ Styles with the, uh, with the forearm off the top rope. Did it a couple of times. Uh, went for the legs. 
Uh, I almost had him a couple of times. Uh, reverse to actually uh, a sleeper, which I'm like was going to happen, but he gave a shot. Then a Canadian destroyer, which I was surprised he actually could do it to him. A lot of stuff off the top rope, you know, a lot of forearms, and uh, nope, didn't happen. The end of the day, uh, he went for the forearm, uh, Lashley moved, then he put on the herd lock, and well, once somebody puts the, he puts a herd lock on anybody, really, it's over. And that's what happened. He won with the herd lock. Then you had the match that, you know, was going to happen sooner or later. Theory against Dolph Ziggler. Now I'm going like, you know, why not? You know, sooner or later. I mean, he ripped on him saying, well, kid, you did this, you get that. Kid, you basically me, you know, 10 years later, 15 years later, whatever. So then, of course, Theory rips on him about, you know, him not winning anything for a while, but then Dolph Ziggler comes back. Yeah, but at least I've won something already. You have something in the briefcase, but you haven't won anything. So whatever. Match went back and forth. Decent little match. But at the end of the day, basically, uh, there we won with the, uh, the AT effect, which is kind of like CM Punk's, you know, move. But it was actually a decent match. Okay, so let's go to NXT. You are at uh, Carmelo Hayes versus Fincy. Uh, very good match. I like the match. Carmelo Hayes is really good. I hope they keep him down there for a while because I don't. They don't need to rush him up there because you got enough wrestlers like Theory that are up there already, like him. So don't rush it. Take your time with him. Vinci uh, more power moves, but at the end of the day, uh, Corey Carmelo Hayes won with the reverse rollover. He a reverse rollover into a into a power bomb. I know people you have to see it to understand it. Then you had Cora Jade versus uh, Rosie per uh, Rosie Perez. Yeah, exactly. So basically, this is a match that had to happen because basically, you know, the hard course and the chance for the title. Uh, good match. Near the end of the match, well, it seems that Cora Jade's carrying around like uh, a cane these days. So you knew that cane was going to be part of the match sooner or later. So basically, she came and the referee was turned around. And she was going to come with the cane. But before the referee turned around, uh, Perez knocked the cane out of her hand. And basically, it was like towards the end of the ring. So uh, she put on like a, a reverse rollover. She almost got the win. But what happened was the referee, for reasons you find out later, anyway, didn't kick the cane out, and I'm going like, okay, something's going to happen. So, of course, what happened was the referee didn't see. She took the cane. She hit her over the head. And then, boom, she basically gave her a power bomb, turned it into a rollover for the win. So then Cora J basically moves on. Then you had the match... Who, who, uh, basically what happens is it's basically uh, Escobar versus D'Angelo now in this particular match if D'Angelo wins Escobar is gone but if Escobar wins El Fantasmo and Escobar still are, are basically away from D'Angelo and basically, they don't have to bother with him and uh, the other guys. Back and forth, back and forth. So this, the way this match ended, which was crazy. Uh, so basically, they're both on the ground. And what happens is you have basically, you had breast knucks. And you had a crowbar left. So it's like, who's going to get to what? They're one's on one side, one's the other one. So basically, they both get up whoever gets to who gets there first. So who's ever going to connect is going to win. So basically, D'Angelo gets to the crowbar. And Escobar gets to the uh, brass knucks. But just before he can hit him with the brass knucks, he hits him over there for the crowbar, knocks him out, 
I'm cold and I'm going like, it's going to happen. Referee goes one, two, and three for the win. Escobar's gone. And I was going like, shit, that sucks. But, well, it is what it is. Then you had the championship match between Mandy Rose and Zoe Starks. Now, remember, Zoe Starks is still coming in with the knee brace. So, basically, coming in with one leg. And, you know, Mandy Rose is going to start attacking that leg. And she did something in this match that I've never seen before. But we'll get to that in a couple of minutes. Uh, match is going back and forth. Uh, Zoe Starks, uh, power moves because that's what she is. Mandy Rose, arm bars, trying to work on the leg. Trying to get to the leg as much as she could. Gets her against the ring rope. You know, hits her you know, in the leg. Going after the leg, throws her against the stairs. So, we get towards the tail end of the match. And... You know, uh, Zoe Stark put on like a figure four, which I was kind of surprised. Uh, Mandy Rose reversed it, and she gets out of it. And then a couple more moves back and forth. So then what happened was, which I've never really seen before. So basically, they're both on the ground, and so and Zoe Stark's is out. Uh, uh, I think Mandy Rose gave her, I forget, it might have been, I think it was a super kick, so she's out. So while she's a little bit groggy, you know, she gave her a spare. So she's basically on the ground. So what happened is she takes off the knee brace and basically uses it against Zoe Stark. I've never seen this before. And she basically gets her into like a dragon sleeper. She takes off part of the thing and basically chokes her out with her own knee brace. It's the craziest thing I've ever seen. So Mandy Rose basically... Remains the champ. Okay. Then you had the match between uh, Ron Breaker and McDonald. McDowell. This match was good. Again, power moves against the technical guy. This little guy put up a good fight. Didn't mind the bleeding. Uh, spares, power bombs. At one time, he got Breaker into a, one of those moves too. But it, you get to see the match the way it was going. A uh, lot of power moves by Breaker. At the end of the day, basically, he, one move, which I still can't believe, he basically did a Canadian dis Breaker, who's, again, a big guy, 260, 270, whatever, went to the top rope with McDonough and gave him a Canadian Destroyer, which I still can't believe I even saw. Okay, today on Sports and Entertainment with Dale and Randy, we got a special guest coming up right now by the name of Michelle... Dimples going. I had the privilege to work with her on a few of her music videos and we're going to actually talk to her about her starting the music and how she started and everything like that and who she is and you know coming straight out of Cincinnati, Ohio. Big up to Cincinnati, Ohio. Okay so we're going to see if we can get a call right now. Hello, how you doing, Michelle? Miss Dimples, shall I call you? <laughs> How's everything I am going? Doing good, thank you. That's good, that's good to hear. Okay, as again, you're on the air with Sports and Entertainment with Dale and Randy. As you know, I'm Randy, okay? And we like to talk to you. You know, give us a brief synopsis of, you know, your music and everything, who you are. So, first question I have to ask you Who is Michelle Dimples? Okay, I'm Michelle Dimples Goins. Okay. And I am called Dimples because it was a nickname because I have dimples. Okay, that makes sense. <laughs> I have a two dimples, one on each side, and a cleft chin, and it's hereditary. Okay, so it runs in the family. It runs in the family. Okay, that's beautiful. Okay. Now, I'd like to ask you, how did you ever get your start into the music business? Because you make some good music, I, I got to tell you. <laughs> Well, thank you. Uh, first yeah. of all, even when I was young, music meant a lot to me. I would choose my programming based on the music. If the music was like a dark, a gloomy type sound of music to me, I knew that it was a drama. It was going to be maybe some tragedy. And I always liked the old school type movies with uh, like from the 50s, 40s and whatever. 
And so that's how I would judge if I was going to watch a movie or not. If the music was light and uh, flowy, I knew it was either going to be a comedy and or a musical. And I grew up li- watching uh, the movies like Beach Blanket Bingo, mm-hmm. Elvis Presley, any type of music type movie I was interested in. And I didn't realize that how important music was at that time because I was a child and how I would judge programming based on the music. But as I got older, I realized how important music is to me. And I don't go anywhere without uh, some type of music. Uh, uh, one of those, now they have all these uh, like cordless Wi-Fi type speakers and yes. all of that, Bluetooth. So I always have music and anyone that knows me knows that I'm gonna have music with me. So, and when I was younger, my mother had bought a piano. We could not play that piano unless we took piano lessons. So of course we were excited about the piano. So my brother, my sister and I, we all took piano lessons and participated in the piano recitals and that. Okay, I've seen the lost you, you said that? Okay, we're going to get right back to it with um, Michelle Dimple. I think we pretty much had lost her. So, matter of fact, I'm going to play one of her musics right now. Okay, play one of her songs. And then we're going to come right back to Michelle Dimples. Thank you. 
we're back. Okay. Let's see if we can get to Michelle Dimples again. I'm just a talking. Okay, I'm sorry. We pretty much got disconnected, but we was able to play one of your songs. Okay, so continue what you were saying about music. Are pretty much based upon what you've spoken already. Music has pretty has pretty much been deep inside your blood. Well, yes, in my family, um, all my relatives were either singers or uh, musicians or business people, professional type um, careers. So it, it does run in the family. And um, when I, I don't know if you uh, caught the part when I was saying I was either nine or ten years old, and I was staying in trouble. I went attended a, a Catholic elementary school, and uh, the teachers would call my mom, and she would come down, and they would allow her to use a room to correct me for my problems that I had created. So um, yeah, that's. You, that's back then when we're getting a butt whooping was legal. <laughs> exactly. And like I said, the teachers would let her use a room. And I'm looking at them like, what? They said, you can use my room. I'm looking at them like, uh-uh. Well, anyway, I had to go in that room, and it wasn't good. It wasn't pretty at all. So a uh, counselor was uh, hired, and she played a box guitar. And I thought to myself, as a child, I'm thinking, well, if I learn how to play that guitar and I get in trouble, maybe I won't be in as much trouble. Mm. So I went home, and I, well, I went to the counselor, and I said, well, I would like to learn how to play a guitar. And she told me, well, if you get a guitar, bring it in, I'll teach you how to play it. I was like, okay. So I went home to my mom, and I told her about the counselor playing the guitar. My mom takes me to the local pawn, pawn shop, and uh purchased a guitar and it was in a cardboard box uh that monday morning i took that cardboard box with the guitar to school and i showed it to the counselor and she taught me some guitar chords and i went home and strummed away started picking out little tunes that i would kind of make up on the guitar and uh that's how i got involved with playing the guitar and the piano uh, was uh, you play it well? Instrument. You play it well. Yes. <laughs> now, well, thank you. Uh, you're welcome. Now, okay. Um, all that is great. Now, most of the music I hear that you play is jazz. Now, I would like to ask you, what inspires you to do jazz? Because when you hear jazz music, I mean, for me coming up, you know, in the music business myself, and um, most of the jazz artists I've been around that I see mostly, and most of the jazz producers that most of the music industry would see would be predominantly men. You don't see too many women, at least on my end, you know, coming from New York and everything. Okay, but I'd like to ask you, what inspired you to do jazz? I'm inspired by music, to be honest with you, and um, it depends on, um, as I said earlier, the, the tone of the music, uh, the style of the music, it has a lot to do with it for me. I can pretty much play jazz, all genres of music. It just depends on the music. Okay. And so, yeah, I'm inspired by jazz. When I was uh, growing up and practicing the flute, I was influenced by Bobby Humphrey, of course, and um, also Hubert Laws. Hubert Laws had the Romeo and Juliet album out, out at the time. So I listened to it, and I copied... Um, the uh, flute um, improvisation that the, uh, he used, and also the same with Bobby Humphrey. Mm. Because they had both encouraged me to practice. And yes. With my mother, that was very important to her. Mm. If she spent money on those instruments, that meant I had to spend time on them. That was the way that she felt about it. And also, I'm sure she didn't feel like she was wasting her money on the instruments. So by the time I was... Uh, uh, 11 or 12, excuse me, um, I could play the bass guitar, electric guitar, box guitar, flute, a piano, or the um, pretty much the focused uh, instruments that I, I like to focus on at the time. And uh, so I grew up playing those instruments until I, um, I received a scholarship 
to attend uh, College Conservatory of Music mm -hmm. while in the high school and study flute with a, a, a flutist, uh, and her husband was uh, uh, also um, involved with the Cincinnati uh, Symphony. And, um, and so I was inspired by her as a flutist, and her husband played flute also. So when it was time for me to get a flute, my instructor brought in a couple of them. My mother, uh, we, I picked them out. We, we picked out the one that I wanted, and my mother paid $560 for that flute back in 1977. Wow. And I still play the flute, and that's the uh, same flute that you hear on those um, tracks um, on, that's available on YouTube. Okay, yes, yes, yes. Now, one of my, well, I, I mean, I don't know too much about jazz, but I know one of the greatest jazz artists, um, producers, they always talk about, you know, on, on radio or online, when they do things like unsung, you know, we can't forget about the great Herbie Hancock. Right. Yes. Yeah, that's one of the jazz people I know. And people don't realize, you know, jazz is almost like a form of hip-hop back in that time. And a lot of hip-hop artists use jazz in their music. Mm -hmm. Now, I want to ask you, from the time you started um, playing the instrument music up until now, how long have you actually been doing, you know, music? How many years off that you could, you could think of? Well, um, I'm thinking I started around when I was nine years old, so we could say over 50 years total. But um, wow. I also have... Um, I, I play the music, but at times I wasn't playing music. So uh, you could say give or take uh, 50 years off and on. Wow, 50 years. My yeah, goodness. Time, isn't it? Yeah, I was one year I was one years old, but I'm not gonna go to that <laughs> when you started. Okay, wow. Okay. All right, so um okay, so um what we're gonna do right now, I wanna go into one of your songs. I recently did a video for I believe it's called The Highway of Love, that is. Yes, I loved your video. It was very nice and I love how you incorporated my music in with the characters. That oh, was, thank you. It's very talented. Thank you so much. I mean, like I said, I, I'm an idealist. And when I see things and I hear things, an idea will come to me immediately. It's just a God-given talent. So when I saw it, when I had the idea for the video, I didn't know what music to put to it. So I started listening to your songs. I said, oh, someone told me to do this one, Highway of Love. So we're going to go into this song right now called Highway of Love from Michelle Dimples Goins. Okay, we'll be back right after this with more questions for Miss Dimples.
Okay, and we're back. That was a good song. How long did it actually take you to make that song? Um, actually, that song was written by a very talented keyboardist, Mr. Paul Golder. He was like a big brother to me. Okay. He had studied with uh, Razor. Um, Razor is the keyboardist. Uh, well, he was the keyboardist for Parliament, Funkadelics, Bootsy, all that funk um, type um, people back in the day. So mm. Paul Golder, he could make a, that keyboard talk. If you really listen to the music uh, that I created on YouTube under Miss Dimples on flute, um, you will hear how talented Paul Golder was. He is now deceased. Um, God rest his soul. Sorry to hear. But um, I listened to his, his songs, and he asked me to put something to his music. So Highway of Love... Um, uh, Bed Bedtime Lullaby was pretty much my idea, but um, his music. And uh, so I would listen to the tracks a few times and then just put my little flute spin on them. So that's where Highway of Love came from, Bedtime Lullaby, uh, Caribbean Boy, um, um, Midnight Lover, all the songs on the Bedtime Lullaby that's uh, featured on YouTube yes. uh, were his creations. And I just put my things to him with the flute. Well, you did a very good job. I mean, he did a very good job. Even though he's no longer here with us. And um, it's very good. I mean, the song, I mean, I'm glad I did the video for it. And the song is just wonderful. I, I love it. Kind of remind me of um, a type of jazz music Um you were here in this movie that Spike Lee did years ago called More Better Blues. I don't know if you ever um, saw the film. Yes, I did. Yes, thank yeah. you so much. Yes, it sounds good. This. Yeah, thank you. No problem. Straight from the heart. I mean, one day I would love to hear, you know, a jazz gospel. I know it's out there, but I never, <laughs> perhaps I never hear, I have heard it yet. Now, I wanted to ask you. Now, I heard when people do jazz, okay, they play what they feel, like what's going on in life. Okay, when you're writing and creating music, okay, what motivates you? The music, the um, style of the music, and as you state, um, what I'm feeling. So, um, I am blessed that I I have um, an inner inner um, inner what you call it, I have an inner relationship with myself when it comes to music. I um, feel and play what is inside of me. Mm. And you mentioned uh, gospel flute. Well, there is a song on that uh, Bad Time Lullaby called uh, Sinner's Prayer that uh, Mr. Golder um, allowed me to listen to and I put my spin on that. And then when I, li when I was playing that on the flute, I felt like I was actually praying. I felt like mm. I was actually talking to the Lord. Mm. It, it, I felt like uh, it was my relationship with the Lord at the mm. time. And when I listen to that sinner's prayer, even now, I, I hear it. I can hear me praying mm -hmm. through that flute. Mm -hmm. Well, people don't realize this, and I'm glad you said that, the sinner's prayer, right? Who knows? I may want to do a video for that, too. I'm getting an idea now. <laughs> okay. Great. <Right>. Okay. <laughs> Okay, and people don't realize this, but despite movies, television, and everything, I even heard someone on TV said music is what really reaches people the most. Music, something about music, reaching out to people, you play a song. It's like you watch a movie, you can watch a love story about someone's life based upon a true story and based upon a book and everything, and it touches people, but when you play the music, it hits people hard. I'll give you an example. It's like when Barry White music was playing, it's even now, Luther Vandross, it's something about like that kind of music just drive women crazy, <laughs> you know, and when jazz is playing, it's like people can feel you, people yes. can feel what you're going through, you could just play something and somebody could be like, my goodness, I don't, you know, I'm hearing the music, but it's like, they're playing what I just been through, I mean, you may have just, someone may have just broke up with their spouse, went through a bad divorce, and all of a sudden, you're playing the kind of music that relates to that. And they just like, my good, your music really touches me. Okay, so music is a real important part. As a matter of fact, I say music is the most important part in the inter entertainment business for us touching people. Now, I like to know, okay, um, how do you get your stories 
created in jazz? I know you say you feel them, but how you do them in jazz? I mean, how I mean, is it like something like you feel and you get a tune in your mind or something you're going through? Or somebody may say something and you start like melody, 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 you know, putting it with their words of the melody. How do you get like your stories created in jazz? Well, actually, uh, the music is in my my mind, mm -hmm. and uh, when I'm playing the flute to the music, I'm pretty much relying on my inner mind to um, allow me to create the music. I also pray um, before the music simply because I feel... Very that important. I have the artistic spirit okay. inside of me, and those artistic spirits help me to create. Mm -hmm. And I rely, I ask them to be with me mm -hmm. before my performance, mm -hmm. because uh, majority of the time I can't even tell you my first note mm -hmm. when I start off. I try to remember the first two or three notes because I know after that it's it's all me, and and my artistic created experiences mm. um that allow me to create the music so i just rely on my inner spirit artistic spirits and any i ask them any i also even rely on um um previous artists that i know have went on and i ask them i say hey anybody feel like jamming with me any any spirit feel like being in me and a positive spirits of course it's got to be all positive i i ask them come and join me come and help me be with me and that's what I do. I, I ask them to come, and and I allow them to create through me. And I say to them, um, um, be with me, create with me, or just take over. So pretty much that's what happens. Okay. They take over. They take Okay, great. Okay, Michelle. Um, is there any way anybody could um, reach out to you? Any you know how they can get to you? Let's say somebody say I'm having a function. I want you to come play for me, or I like to work with you, or anything. Is there any place they can reach you on? Like you know, we big right now social media. So social media is everything. Is there any emails or email or websites or anything you can reach you at? Uh, yes, Facebook, of course, Michelle Goins. That's uh, G O I N S. And uh, Michelle is M I C H E L L E. And uh, my Facebook page. It's available to uh, contact me by messenger mm -hmm. and or uh, YouTube. They can always respond to your videos yes. that you're creating for me. And uh, and even through you, I'm sure that uh, um, you wouldn't mind them contacting you and then they can contact me. Yes. Now, OK, a couple more things. Number one, let's say there's a new and upcoming uh, musician that wants to, you know, do music. They like to do jazz. Any advice you got for them that you'd like to give them? Because I mean, right now, you know, everything is technology. It's not like, you know, when you first started years ago, you know, you had to get the flute and all that stuff. Right now, everything is all over the computer. And it makes things a lot more simpler, a lot more easier, and a lot more enhanced. Okay, any advice or anybody may say, you know what, I want to do music, um, but I'm kind of scared, I'm nervous, I don't know how to go about doing it. What advice would you give to the generation right now? And also, I'd like to know, are you planning to create any new music? Like, you got any, um, you know, new albums coming out or anything? Um, I've worked on, I'm working on a couple of projects that I really can't disclose right now uh, until, you know, everything is completed and those artists are comfortable with me providing that information. But I do have some projects that I am currently uh, working to put together for these artists. And as far as um, any advice that I can give is, of course, practice makes perfect and it's not always going to be perfect there's always going to be a situation to come up and we can't worry about what may happen what could happen just do you do whatever you want with your music and be creative with yourself and be open with trying new things even on the spot be spontaneous we can't be afraid of us messing up so we mess up so what you keep going. You can't mess up and say, oh, no, I'm not going to do this any longer. You just keep going. 
And uh, a lot of times, some of those mess up may be a, a great plus to the music. You never know what your mm. artistic spirits are actually putting in you to play. Mm. So uh, you can't be worried. Of course, you may be nervous, but just get out there and do you. Be you and do you. That's what I say. Exactly. exactly. You said it correct. You hit it right on the nail. One thing I want to go back to what you said where is real powerful, and I think we need this in our schools as well. You said before you do anything, you also pray, and prayer is powerful. Okay, the Bible said the yes. fervent prayer of the righteous avail as much. I would like to see one day, I mean, this is what I would like to see. And you know what's going on with the school shootings and the massive shootings going crazy. I would like right. to see a jazz song and a video being done, whether I do or somebody else do it, about the school shootings, about the shootings with the youth. Because the majority right. of people that shooting today is from ages 30 on down. Actually, ages 25 on down. Okay, so I would love to hear a jazz song one day that's just about stop the shooting. Like we used to call the thing stop the violence back in the days in the 80s with hip hop and everything. I like to see something called stop the shooting. I like to hear something like that one day. Do you think, you know, perhaps, I'm not trying to tell you that, you know, what the, how do you do your music, but you think you could come up with something like that one day? Yes, it's possible. And when you think about it, there's a lot of songs out there already uh, that deal with uh, the violence and uh, social situations. Wake up every, wake up everybody for one. Uh, how long that song has been out? Uh, Marvin Gaye's "What's Going On." Mm -hmm. uh, these songs are already um, songs available that were trying to put a message out, and there's plenty more songs. Mm -hmm. The problem is the social situations that we're in, and a lot of the, um, you could say, a lot of the, the kids grew up learning how to shoot, how to use guns. Yes. Uh, we have uh, people in uh, the, the environments where shootings take place every day. Mm. To hear a gun to go off is really normal mm. nowadays. To see uh, violent uh, tendencies of uh, people are displayed all the time. It's nothing new. Yes. Well, and, and the only people that are really going to uh, benefit from the shootings are the gun companies. Mm. Yes. The gun companies make the guns. The gun companies make the bullets. Yes. And those guns get out. They are supposed to protect people, but people are using them in other ways. And I don't believe all of the um, shootings are black on black. I, I, all I all I'm going to say about that is we have to be um, we have to be observant of our surroundings, and we need to come together more. Um, as as the community, um, the, the parents nowadays have to work. That's understandable. Mm. But we also have to put that time in with our children. Yeah, and we even have to teach them right from wrong, give them more moral and integral integrity type values. That's that's lacking nowadays. Yes, you know, it's too common for people to see things that shouldn't be happening. It's not normal, but people are making it more normal. Because it's too many people doing them. And our parents, you know, as when we were growing up, we feared our parents more. Mm. We feared if we did this, this is what our parents are going to do to us. We couldn't even go anywhere. And if uh, another family corrected you, well, that was okay with the parent. But now you got parents abusing the kids, uh, you know, the kids growing up uh, on drug-induced uh, environments. And it's not normal. It's not normal. We, we they won't have any normalcy until our uh, elders become more patient with the children, teach their children, spend time with their children, put the time in. We have to be involved in our children's lives. Yes, that's that way the children won't grow up saying, well, my parent didn't do this. My parent didn't do that. They can't blame the parents. Mm. You know, the, the, uh, the number one problem to me is the lack of parenting. And I'm just going to leave it at that. Mm, great. Enough said. Now, here's what I really feel. Okay, and I'm not a psychic. I want nobody to think I'm a psychic. What I'm about to say. Here's what I feel. Based upon what I heard your music 
from doing your videos and what our viewers all over the world have heard in your music. I really believe that you can put you you're at a level now and been at a level that you're so professional that you can produce a whole song, even an album for artists such as Alicia Keys, Mary J. Blige, uh, Rihanna, the list goes on. Is there any artist you would say you would like to work with or have you ever thought about working with or anything? Even if the artists like go back, stretch back way to Billy Ocean or Elton John. I mean, I can even see you working with, with artists like that because that's how good you are in doing your music. Uh, at this particular time, I've thought about Lizzo. She plays flute. She plays mm -hmm. very well. Um, I love her spirit. I love her attitude. And of course, you know, she's had some downtime, uh, you know, with her, uh, you know, maybe some depression, whatever. But that's the emotion, just like being happy. And mm -hmm. we all go through that. Uh, she is one of the ones that I would like to work with now. In the past, I thought about maybe uh, Bobby Humphrey. I uh, did reach out uh, by Facebook, never got a response from her. And I didn't really want to, uh, you know, maybe produce an album, but just have an opportunity to perform with her. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, I did not uh, get any type of response from her. Mm -hmm. Um, I also thought about some another um, idea project that I kind of uh, mentioned to you, uh, but I'm not going to, you know, put that out there right now. Sure. But right now, I would just say Lizzo. Lizzo. Okay, Lizzo. If you're out there, if you're listening, if the producers, the road manager, whoever, Lizzo, listening, okay, you hear it right now on Sports or Entertainment with Dale and Randy, okay? Miss Dimples would love to work with you. So Lizzo, you're dealing with a straight professional. 50 plus years in the business. Can't get greater than that. Okay, that's almost up there with Quincy Jones. That's actually up there with Quincy Jones. Okay, so Lizzo, let's make this happen. But I would love to see you do, and because she, she plays instrument too. Like I said, I would love to see you work with Alicia Keys. It's just something about Alicia Keys I'm feeling right now that you can kind of mother in in this jazz of music, producing. I really feel you and her, the chemistry, y'all connect, it would be so electrifying. I mean, that's me, okay? And also with Mary J. Blige, because she sings a lot of songs that relates to a lot what you play. What I mean by that, she sings out of what she feels. You play out of what you feel. So to put the both of y'all, all y'all together, oh my goodness, it'd be like another We Are The World from back when Lionel Richie and them sung it back in the day. So I just want to encourage, you know, and let everybody else know Filmmakers, every because this is going all over. And whoever's listening, filmmakers, TV, uh, television shows, anything. If you want to, if you need some jazz music for your film or anything, hit up Michelle Dimples, okay? Or you could contact me, you know, Randy Jones on my show, and we'll make this happen. But I would love to see you, Miss Dimples, to work with these artists I just named, okay? So, Mary J. Well, Blige, are you out there? Listen up, sis. You got it. She got it. Alicia Keys. Come on. Let's make this happen. Okay. Sisters coming together in music. Sisters coming together in music. Men, we've been doing it for too long. It's time for the women to rise up now. Okay. Michelle, thank you so much. What did I call you? Michelle or Miss Dimples or what? I don't, I don't, I want to, out, out of reference, I'm going to call you the right name. Michelle, Miss Dimples or? Miss Dimples on flute, Dimples, Michelle Goins, Michelle, all of that works for me and I appreciate the compliments. And you never, you may not believe this, but uh, Mary J recorded, I'm going down. I have a sample that I did of me playing, I'm going down on flute at least a couple of years before she put it out. And so I know I'm on the right track on some uh, musical ideas, but it's important to follow through. You have to put the energy, you have to put the effort out there because other than that, it's just an idea. Exactly, but I guarantee you this much. And I'm going to say it like this. God's willing, you and Mary J. Blige link up together in the studio. It's going to be electrifying. I kid you not. It's almost going to be like the rebirth of Diana Ross. <laughs> it's going to be wow. electrifying. <laughs> I guarantee I can see this. I feel this. You and her get together. My goodness. She sing a song and you get the music. Oh, my goodness. 
My she's goodness. She's a bad lady. She's a bad oh, lady. Oh, yes. She, she's going to be here in Cincinnati on the 18th of October. Uh, due to the pandemic, the, um, her shows were canceled until now. So I'm looking forward to actually uh, seeing her live mm -hmm. here in Cincinnati. And, um, and Mary J., I've seen her perform. I love her. I love her spirit. And no matter what, these artists go through whatever they may be down about they always do their thing and up, uplift us yes with their talent and their love of music and so i appreciate them and not only do i do um uh jazz i love to play blues i have a song out called um i got my baby right here that's uh, on uh, youtube also that is a uh, bluesy jazz type song and it's and i love it I love that song. So I love to do all John years of music, not just jazz. Anything that I feel, anything that the uh, my uh, creator inspires me with, that's what I do. Okay, so y'all heard it, okay? I have to correct myself. She does blues, jazz, everything. Gospel, jazz, gospel, blues, everything, okay? So if you're listening out there, producers, everything, everyone. Like I said, Mary J, Alicia Keys, etc. Rihanna, the list goes on. She's here. We're here. Let's make this happen. Thank you so much, Miss Dimples, for taking Thank your you. time. You're welcome out of your busy schedule. And I'm um, talking with us today on Sports and Entertainment. You know, you and I are not strangers to each other. We've been friends on Facebook for a number of years. And also, I did your music videos. And yeah. I'm getting an idea to do another one. Next one may be in a cartoon, a real loving one. <laughs> okay? Wow. Next one may be in a cartoon, a real loving one. I just can't wait to meet with you and we could just sit up and link and i definitely got to get your song in my films in the future definitely anybody out there you want to give a special shout out to you want to say hello to you know your hometown where you at or anywhere else i like to say hello to cincinnati hello to all my family and friends and anyone that loves to hear my music i appreciate you i appreciate the support and i want to thank you randy and your partner for inspiring me even more and motivating me to continue with my music no problem you're absolutely welcome where can they find you and where can they if somebody say hey i like to purchase your um songs i need like to get your songs where can they get you? Where can they find you? One more time. CD Baby, baby. CD Baby. I'm on that. My uh, my songs are available on CD Baby, iTunes, Amazon, uh, pretty much all those media outlets. Okay. Well, y'all heard it here. Get the album. Get the CD. It's hot like Jamaica. Even hotter. Okay? <laughs> Thank you. Thank okay. you so uh, Yes, yes. And be ready, Miss Dimples. I really believe you're going to go on tour with this okay I appreciate be ready you okay because we need appreciate you no problem i appreciate you because we need the real music to come back not this candy land stuff we're hearing today that we don't know half of what they're talking about but yet they win all of these awards for gibberish we need stuff that's gonna make it's like i heard steve harvey say back in the days when you play mute when you play songs about love you was really in love okay Today you play songs about love. It's not really love. It's just, oh, I like you because we had sex. Oh, that ain't nothing. <laughs> okay? So we need, to go, we, need, <laughs> we need to go back to the basics. And I believe that's what's going to happen. Because this is how our children will grow. We get them to the next generation. Well, Miss Dimples, thank you so much again. I look forward to having you back on the radio. Who knows? I may travel to Cincinnati and... Do you live or fly you into New York and <laughs> and do you live on the radio, okay? Thank you so much. Wonderful. Sound like a great plan to me. Yes, and I can't wait to get to Cincinnati. I always wanted to go to Cincinnati and everything. And um I look forward to it. Okay, so thank you so much. And our viewers like to thank you. And thank you everyone for listening. Okay, this is uh Randy Jones with Dale Smith for Sports and Entertainment. God bless you. We love you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. You make me smile.
me get so fast You give me those butterflies My heart, my soul for watching Sports and Entertainment with Dell and Randy. Uh, we appreciate everyone listening to us and taking time out of your busy schedule, you know. And um, would you like to say, if you have any comments, you want to comment, or if you have any, like, say, you're a musician, you're a recording artist, and you'd like to have your um, material played on our air, just give us an email. Also, we're also looking for sponsors as well, if you know, if you like what you hear and want it to continue as we do, okay, because it takes a whole lot of work and effort to do a radio show, especially for two hours, okay, um, please send a, a warm welcome of, you know, a donation or whatever, you know, from your kindness of your heart to help us stay on the air, because it's listeners like you that keep us on. All that information I said, send your material, comments, and send any uh, donation you'd like to do. We do mostly cash app. You can um, send it to uh, Randy Jones Business at Yahoo.com. That's Randy Jones Business at Yahoo.com. And acting, A C T I N G, take one, the number one at, Yahoo, at Yahoo.com. Okay, thank you so much. May God bless you. We love you, but God loves you more. Take care. Goodbye. Bye bye. Okay.